My first question was actually, I wanted to ask you kind of before starting um, SWAT, you had experience working on several productions like Soul Food, Southland, CSI New York, as well as Friday Night Lights. Were there any pieces of advice or skills you took with you when you started working on SWAT? Well, Natalie, um, thanks for that question. I would say there are several pieces of advice that, that I've been able to, to gain, fortunately, you know, through my career that I, I definitely take the heart took the heart and use on a daily basis. Um, a few to highlight, I would say, you know, would be um, really to, to love what you do, you know, and which is easier said than done intellectually. I know it, that's easy to say, but to keep in mind why you started to do what you do in the first place. Why, why are you here? What are you, what drives you to do what you do? For me, in, in my case, um, I've always loved writing. I've always loved storytelling. Um, you know, when I was fortunate enough to start a career as a professional writer in Hollywood and writing for TV shows and eventually creating, you know, a, a show in SWAT on CBS, what I always tried to keep in mind is um, exactly at the core of it, you know, why am I looking to tell these stories? Why are these stories important for, for me to tell? They're fun, yes, it's, it's a fun job. So there's that. But also at the core of it, you know, I know, um, Personally, I love the idea of trying to bring people together, you know, bridge gaps, um, you know, try to improve communications, uh, oftentimes through seemingly disparate groups. And so with a show like SWAT, it's kind of the accumulation of a lot of experiences that I'd had with um, just seeing how communication breakdowns happen, how often they happen between individuals, between groups. So when I came up with the idea for SWAT, I had the idea for a character, an African-American cop who understood what it was like to be a black man in America and also to be a police officer. And again, those two groups sometimes are seemingly disparate, you know, where there is a troubled history to say the least in a lot of communities. I thought about a character being in the middle of that and understanding both sides of that and, and trying in his own way to, to navigate it and improve communications as much as possible. Uh, which is an optimistic you know, point of view, but that's part of why I tell stories. So part of my, you know, one of the lessons I definitely take with me every day is to always remember why I'm doing any project. What, you know, what's, what's my motive? What's my motivation here? Um, and that helps with, um, with the job that can be a lot of fun, but also challenging, you know, on those days where things seem bleak or, tough or challenging, you know, I definitely fall back on what's the original motivation, you know, why, why is this important? You know, when I'm, when you're making sacrifices to spend time away from loved ones or, or family or friends or long hours or, you know, you know, tough situations, those, that to me is kind of the number one thing that I go back to is remember why you're telling this story, you know, is it a story worth telling? Um, you know, and remember your passion for it, because oftentimes, you know, I, I think that can that is the biggest help from project to project and throughout the career and what can be a tricky business. And you were talking about communication and kind of having those discussions and creating a show that, you know, SWAT focuses a lot on the discussions around, you know, Black Lives Matter and Blue Lives Matter. And Especially, you know, after the murders of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, I know the first episode of your recent season talked about police brutality. And I was wondering how those conversations kind of came about when you were talking to your cast and writers and your co-creator. Well, I mean, we were fortunate on, on SWAT that we have, you know, and I should preface it too by, by saying that I'm, I've worked you know, I co-created SWAT with Sean Ryan, who is, um, you know, very esteemed, you know, creator of The Shield and 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 creator, showrunner um, of various different projects throughout the years. So I was very blessed to to work alongside Sean and learn from him in many ways. Um, we we're fortunate also to, you know, even extend it beyond the two of us to have a team of individuals who were all interested in telling stories that would, you know, add layers to the national conversation in various different ways. So it was never really a challenge either, even from the beginning to 
you know, to communicate what the mission was, you know, what types of stories you wanted to tell. You know, we're fortunate to have um, great support from Sony um, as a studio and from CBS as a network. You know, um, one of the, the mandates that we had in the very beginning that, you know, I was even guilty of, you know, was this idea of whether or not audiences and frankly, the business would be ready to try to tell police stories in a different way. Uh, one of the, the biggest notes we got early in the pilot process was, you know, don't write what you think that we want, write, you know, what you actually want to see. Uh, that came from CBS, surprisingly. And so from the beginning, there was a team of people around who wanted to kind of tell stories in a different way to try to add um, what I would say, um, you know, a little bit of nutritional value, you know, to uh, to the entertainment. Um, and so with that, you know, we we looked to to we've always looked to try to take the ball and run with this, so to speak, and to really, you know, look to always balance out or be grounded premises, grounded characters, layered characters, three dimensional points of view based on the, the collaborators who we have, the, the talented writing staff that, that we had in place, the directors, the the cast, who are not only great looking people, but also very talented individuals, you know, in their own right and come from very different backgrounds, looking to maximize the talent, you know, and just take advantage of, of the points of view that we have. And also you know, number one, of course, with any TV show is to really entertain, to have great stuff to look at. Attractive people doing really cool stuff, you know, big stunts, action, humor, romance. Um, and then along with that, you know, to have these grounded stories that also, you know, would tackle things that I think most shows uh, were not so keen to tackle, you know, especially when the show started four years ago. And do you think that it's having an influence on other police shows? Because, you know, a lot of other police shows didn't really have those discussions before. Yeah, you know, the, it's the, the hope is that it has, you know, ripple effects. It's hard to say in the moment because, you know, we don't yet have historical context for it. We're going to have to, you know, we'll have to see it as, as time passes. And if there was, if this was an anomaly or if this was actually, you know, part of a sea change. Um, but, you know, I, I'm happy that we exist. I'm happy that we, you know, that, that SWAT's been able to have, you know, four now going into a fifth season, you know, uh, worth the material. Um, you know, I should also, you know, explain, even though I'm co-creator of SWAT, I, I decided to move on after season four. So um, so I, I wish the show well, and I know it'll continue to tell, you know, great stories. Um, but... You know, the, that, that whole idea of, of kind of how, what kind of effect it has on, on other productions, it's hard to say. Every production is so different. You know, I, I do think the national conversation um, seems to have changed the climate in a way that, that you know, is different than, than before. We're having conversations now that we didn't have before. I think our show is part of that, you know, and we take great pride in that. And, um you know, and you hope that, that people were just smarter, you know, moving forward. You hope that there's more of an attention to detail, maybe a little more empathy, you know, and looking to, to try to actually um, look at stories from, from a wider, you know, um, from a wider point of view, you know, taking into account different perspectives that maybe in the past either weren't thought about or were, were kind of disregarded or swept under the rug. Um, that is the hope. I'm an optimist. I hope that that is the case. I'm, I'm eager to see if the if the act, the actions reflect the words that that have been used in this past year, and only time would tell. Right. Yeah. And talking about kind of the national conversation being more open now, now more than ever, have your own perceptions kind of evolved or been reinforced in, of the police or that system since working on SWAT? That's a good question. And I, as far as my own, you know, point of view, the, the analogy that I use is it kind of felt um, before 2020, it felt like um, myself and, and others were kind of in a small group having a very intimate conversation about these things, kind of like the equivalent of being in like a room with closed doors and you're talking about things, you're not sure if anyone's really paying attention. And then all of a sudden 2020 happens and it felt like like a flash mob of people rushed in to join the conversation all of a sudden where everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people, a lot more people wanted to have an understanding of how to have the conversation. And, you know, just, you know, 
And so certainly my, my perception of whether or not people were ready to have that conversation change. It was, you know, my eyes were widened to the idea that I felt like, you know, I, my hope, you know, increased and that I felt like, well, perhaps this is an opportunity for more people to get in on this conversation. Um, I think as far as, you know, my own perspective on things, um, you know, I, I don't know. I think, I, you know, I pretty much, I had the same perspective that I had before, you know, and that my hope is that, and, and my feelings that there's, there's always a way to bridge gaps and, and to, to try to increase, you know, communication. Um, you know, I, I think a big part of it is, is really just looking at, um, you know, moving forward. What, what I look to do now is I, I think there are new ways and better ways to actually make that possible. You know, with more ears that are open, I think there are more avenues now perhaps to try to tell stories that just weren't available before. So my perspective on the business has changed somewhat where, you know, I see opportunities that weren't there before. And, um, and part of me feels the responsibility of trying to, you know, take advantage of those opportunities to try to get stories out there that wouldn't have been told even five years ago. Right. And I think art does a great job and kind of even helping start those conversations or, you know, create space for that. Um, and I was curious because you said you were kind of moving on. I was wondering since the show started in 2017 and, and now it's going on to its fifth season as you kind of head off, what, ha what has been the most fulfilling part of working on SWAT? So many things, you know, definitely the people um, from Sean Ryan to the people at Sony to, um, you know, to the people at CBS who um, I've worked with for a long time, since the beginning of my career, to our writing staff, to our very talented cast, to our production team, which is outstanding and worked through COVID like champions. Um, you know, we were the first primetime drama that went back into full production during COVID. And our, our team led by the line producer, Paul Bernard, just, you know, can't say enough about the work that they did. Our stunt team, which is, um, you know, just Charlie Brewer and Austin Brewer and their 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 uh, their team, the level of professionalism that they bring to the table, and and the fact that our show looks so dynamic and visceral, you know, is a large credit to them. It just we just have an outstanding team, an outstanding family, and it was it was great working with them, you know, day to day. Um, at the same time, I'm just selfishly, you know, as an individual, I was just really happy to see something that I didn't have when I was a kid, you know, was, there was a, a black male action star on network TV who was not only kick ass, but also like dealt with real issues. You know, when I was a kid, there was nothing like that um, at all. So I was just, I'm just really proud that that exists, you know, period. Um, I'm very proud of that, very proud of that and very proud of, of what, you know, the, the show continues to accomplish. So, um, so there's many, many things that I would be, you know, that I'm, I'm definitely thankful for, uh, but those two stand out, the, the people and, and also the, the, the president um, that myself as an individual, you know, it, it impacts me on a personal level. 